Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Friday's live show. Everybody having a good week? Alright, let's see what we got going on here. All right, we're going to start with some good questions and a couple announcements. So we'll start the announcements first. Uh, I just want to let everybody know I got interviewed by the Washington Post. And uh, it's it's an interesting article that they're doing. And it's supposed to come out at the end of this month. And it was, uh, I guess they interviewed Paul Reed Smith and Henry Hoons Gibson, the president of Fender, George Groon. And um, I don't know if I'll get eventually edited out or if I'll be in there. I got the impression I'm going to be in the article. I'm just letting you guys know because if you see it, let me know. <laughs> Right, post it on the Facebook or Instagram uh, because I don't know exactly when it comes out. I just was in, it was implied the end of this month, so uh, I was pretty excited to be involved with that. So, other than that, how's everybody doing? I'm enjoying the new. Uh, we're officially in summer here in Arizona. I believe it's 118 day. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure that's what they said. Or it will be that tomorrow uh, for you guys and other places. You can understand. Uh, 118. <laughs> so, um, all right. So anyways, uh, let's start off some good questions. What I obviously missed you guys last week. Uh, I was out of town. That's what happened. So I've now, uh, started putting the, uh, putting these, uh, these live shows out. They're forecasted. So like the next one's already up. You can see it, uh, if you go to the channel and I will keep them a week to two weeks out. So you never have to guess anymore. So, and I'll try to go to a monthly schedule, but for very, at the very least, you'll know at least two weeks in advance. So, um, Okay, let's start with Michael. Michael says, hey, Phil, what are your opinions on the Fender Light Ash Strats? You know, the Light Ash Strats were, uh, and, and there was Tellys too, were really cool. Basically, uh, what's nice about that guitar is it brings up a great subject. So ash, sometimes referred to as swamp ash, but there is no real species called swamp ash. It's more of a slang term. Um, ash uh, wood, because it grows in a very wet climate, um, it it can be very extreme in the differences of the weight. In other words, um, the the a block, a telly, let's take a telly body or a strat body. We'll keep a strat body. A strat ash body can be almost 10 pounds or as little as six. And the same size body, the density will make that up. And the reason that is, is because when they cut down the tree, if the tree was, uh, if the wood is from the bottom of the tree, it was full of moisture. So as it dries up, it condenses in. But the top of the tree had a lot less moisture. So when it dries up, it condenses in and becomes even more, right? The fibers become even more condensed. And so, um, so ash is interesting because it's one of the scariest woods for me as a guitar player, because I like lighter bodies to buy without picking up because... It can be so extreme in the weights. So uh, Fender, what they did is, a lot of companies have done this, they went through their supply of wood blanks and picked out all the light ones and then started making some guitars. So to answer your question, I like the guitars. They're very cool. Basically, what Fender did is they did something I was already doing. I'd go in and pick up guitars and just see which were the lighter ones. And like I said, ash will generally be some of the lightest bodies out there and the heaviest. It's most extreme. That's why Fender prefers alder because it's a little less money and it's more consistent. Alder usually only weighs about a pound to a pound and a half difference per body blank. Um, and, um, and I'm just stating what the Fender factory had, 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 uh, had taught me and Ralph. So, um, that's mostly, that information is mostly from how Fender sorts the wood. So there you go. Uh, the next question is, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm going to sometimes butcher these, these sign-ons guys, uh, is Shinery you kid? Sure. Is Shinery you kid? McCarty 594 USA Gibson standard or traditional or or R8 or R9? I guess the question is which one I'd pick. Um, you know, I really like my Gibson um, classic. Uh, that gold top, right? You know, I can do this backwards, but you see it. The gold top's behind me. Uh, it's really nice. As you guys can see, I have a PRS 594. That's the one I ordered at the NAMM show when I interviewed Paul. Um, and I'm going through that right now and what I think of that. Um, I really like them. The McCarty 594 is one of the best playing sounding guitars I've ever heard in my life. The neck is really chunky and it's something I'm trying to come to grips with if I like or not. I, it's such a different guitar. I mean, I don't need thin necks, but it's a, it's a great guitar. But I'm still loving that that classic. So, uh, my question or my question back to you would be, I would definitely try those guitars, right? The biggest issue for me is the Gibson guitars on uh, comparatively to the 594 are a better value. Um, regardless of, of, 
of so I'll, I'll put it to you frankly so the 594 I paid I paid dealer cost right um, and even dealer cost was more I wouldn't say a lot more but significantly more than what I paid paying off the street at the Sam Ash that I bought that classic so I paid uh, the classic was two thousand dollars they gave me ten percent off but you add tax back in it's two thousand dollars the 594 was uh, still more than that at a dealer cost break um, and uh, so that being they, to me the reason I pointed out that way to me they're almost like in price guitars to me to what I paid but given that the guitar would be thirty two hundred dollars street uh, I don't know if I like it $1,200 more than my classic. It is $1,200 nicer. I just don't know if it's, I like it $1,200 more. So something to think about there. The fantastic guitars though. Um, okay. Next question is, uh, Phil Smith just said, Hey, I love the green custom 24. Me too. Uh, I think somewhere when I did my gear reviews or my gear, when I talked about my, pro my, my personal guitars, I explained how I got that one. Uh, a friend and a customer had had wanted it. I called PRS. They found one. Uh, it was the most beautiful guitar I've ever seen. They sent us a picture and he said it was too much money. And, uh, and, uh, I, I bought it because <laughs> I didn't think it was too much money for what that was. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, David, uh, here's a good question, because uh, I really like this question. It says, how come there are so few PRS Senzera reviews on YouTube? You know what, David? It's probably because they really, they they released the Senzera at the NAM show, and then they didn't really get them out, and there's not a whole lot in the first batch. I did a review of the 20. I have a 50 uh, right now that, that I have that I can review. If you guys are interested in that, I'll review it. I had no intention of reviewing the 50. Um the the it is a fantastic amplifier though uh, i would definitely say it's one of the best in those price range amplifiers they really did a good job there's some things i don't love about it i kind of addressed that in the review but overall great value great amp uh not, nothing to be ashamed of on the prs side um also prs really isn't very uh easy to they don't send free gear in fact i was talking to a youtuber a few weeks ago and they were saying how do you get all this prs gear i'm like well, I, I buy it so they didn't know that. They thought I had some kind of hookup. Um, yeah, PRS really has very little in the way of, of interacting with YouTubers to get them the gear. Um, so that's what it is. Plus, a lot of reviews now are just becoming, no one's buying their stuff. They're just getting free stuff sent to them. So, uh, you know, so it's going to start messing up with what you see. That's why you got to kind of dig through and find that guy that's in his bedroom and he just got one from a guitar center and see what he got to say. Um, yeah, book Bookwood Bruce said, start your own brand and compete with Chapman. No, no, no. I would never, never do that again. I, I'm not going to lie. There's two things I've pretty much resolved in what I've decided to do uh, with whether my businesses or with YouTube is I'll never go back into the guitar slash business again where I build guitars. I just, I won't, I won't do it. Um, unless I was building one-offs in the high-end custom realm, but I'm not going to do... Um, uh, you know, overseas production again for a thousand reasons. We can talk about that anytime. And uh, the other thing is I'll never have a YouTube endorsed product of any kind. Um, okay. Doyle uh, said, oh, Doyle uh, tipped me 10 bucks and th thanks for looking in the shirt. No problem, Doyle. Like I said, when I emailed you today, um, it's going to get shipped out next week. The, uh, the uh, no problem at all. Uh, like I said, we'll make sure you get that shirt. Um, Doyle ordered a shirt and T-Chip kind of messed it up, which does happen. Some of you guys contact me about that and tell me. Um, I really have no power at all with T-Chip, but I found a way to circumvent them and and, uh, and 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 taking care of you guys when you have problems. Um, so if you guys have T-Chip problems, please let me know. I'll do my always do my best to, to get that resolved. Plus, it helps me know if I need to move on to another sh shirt provider. So Shut Up Lick Talk said, hey, Phil, ever ever bought a neck or body from Stu Mac? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, uh, and he, thanks for the $2 as well. Uh, yeah. Um, shut up. Let's talk. I I've actually bought many necks and bodies from a Stu Mac. In fact, um, I bought, uh, the most recent ones I did was a few years back. I bought two Paduke, um, uh, Strat style necks with reverse headstocks and two Paduke Jackson style bodies. Obviously, you, if you know Nuno Bittencourt stuff, you know I was trying to build those. Um, and uh, very good. Uh, the only thing I tell everybody with is you have it's 
it's problematic because you have to think every detail, right? So you you know when you order it, you have to make sure you're asking every question. The next are the trickiest. Make sure you know what fret wire sizes are, what radiuses are. Make sure you know things um, because what I learned from buying uh, uh, pro products from from companies like Stumac or and or or Warmoth um, is that the trick is. Um, that you always think you can predict what you want and you order it and you get it and you go, man, if I now knowing this, I would have made changes. And that's why if you notice artist guitars, when you see artist guitars, they always say they had like 12 or 15 prototypes. Well, now you know why. So the only downside of that is, is that. But other than that, Stumac necks are fantastic. Okay, next one was Mike C. Mike C said, so I'm on the fence on a Hughes and Kittner 2 Meister 36 or an Ignator tw thir Tweaker 36. Can you offer some insight? Uh, yeah, I can, uh, Mike. Uh, so the 2 Meister, I had the 2 Meister 18. I have not played the 2 Meister 36. So I have to state that right off the bat. I have played the Tweaker 36. Um, I prefer the Tweaker 36. Uh, the 2 Meister to me is such a cool looking amp and it's a cool vibing amp. But I've said this before, if if you're into Strat style guitars, I would definitely go Ignator. If you're into Les Paul guitars, the 2 Meister would be fine. The 2 Meisters are a little bright and that's really great for the clarity, but it really kills on those Strats, man. Those those highs just ping out and they don't sound so great. Um, so if it was if it was me and I was in your situation with those two guitars, or two amps, I would go with the Ignator over the 2 Meister. So there you go, if that helps. Okay, now back to you. Hold on, jumps around for a second. Okay, let's go back to the to the main page here. Okay, so let's see what we got. We got um. Okay, uh, s s satire, 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 um, whatever. I'm sorry, guys. Satire says, "Hey, Phil, what's your opinion on Gibson pricing? Do you think it's too much for the quality?" No, I don't think Gibson's overpriced. I think Gibson is like to to to. To pick it out, it's simple. They're like any major corporation, especially in America, where they have this vast broad. Like, use a look. At, look at a brand of cars like Ford or Chevy. There's a vast variety of very affordable and good quality products, and then towards the end tier, it gets a little obnoxious and it's overpriced. Gibson's no different than that, right? Yeah. Do I think some of these six thousand dollar Les Pauls are a little over over the top? I do, but no. Um, like I said, that classic. I mean, I would I could tell you the sweet spot for me would have been sixteen hundred dollars. I think you know that's what it's worth to me. Um, but uh, no, not compared to not compared to uh, what other companies are offering out there. I don't think they're too r ridiculous. And one thing about Gibson, to their credit, is they do make a lot of affordable style guitars, right? So if that helps. Okay. Um, let's see. The next question is. Robert uh, wants to know, do you remember the Guild Pilot Bases? I do. I actually owned one for a while. Now, it was one of the Guild Pilot Bases that Fender had made, um, and uh, I liked it a lot. It was a really cool uh, cool base. In fact, I had a, it was an American-made one, and it, it was in this cool wood color. Um, and, um, you know, to be honest, I only got rid of it because I was after something else, or I had it for a while and got kind of burnt out, but great stuff. Let's see. Um... Okay, so here's a question. Master4999 says, I recently bought a Princeton Reverb uh, and has a Jensen P12 uh, Q speaker in it. Um, and he wants to know if it's how will it sound different once it's broken in? More clarity? No, I don't think clarity, if anything, when speakers break in, they soften. So to me, they get warmer, they get fuller sounding. I don't really notice that they get a little brighter. Um, um, so no, I don't think that would be the effect I would expect you to hear. Um, so if you're having an issue with the clarity of the amplifier, I don't think the speaker breaking in is going to fix that for you, sadly enough. Um, so if, so there you go. The uh, I I I like the Jensen speaker, and I really like um, you know Eminence. But I've kind of learned from me with the Princetons. Um, I like the Celestion based speakers because of that reason, right? They get a little brighter, and I can dial out the highs if I want. Um, let's see. Next one is. Uh, 
Uh, Gareth says, hey, any chance there'll be more bass-related content for us four-string bass players? Yeah, we talked about this once before, and I think what we decided was acoustic and bass, I'll do one or two videos a month or try to figure that in. Um, and again, the only issue with bass right now for me is I don't have a whole lot of bass gear to review or talk about, so I don't think I'll do a review videos. I think I'll do some more instructional type videos, and that was kind of my plan. Um, and to be honest with you guys, so you know, I'm kind of banking up videos because I plan to do a master blast of videos towards the that what I call the March to 100,000 subscribers. I want to have a lot of content and just keep it pounding and 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 uh, do something fun and exciting to the end. Not just so much to get to the 100,000 subscribers. That's not really the point. The point is to do something fun. It feels kind of you know exciting. So I want it to feel exciting uh, with you guys as well. Um, okay, next one is. What is my favorite looper pedal? My favorite looper pedal right now and for a while has been the Boss RC1. I really like that the LED tells me where the one starts, although I never really needed that before. Uh, I really enjoy that pedal. It's good, it's quality, it's $100. Um, I, I, I can't imagine anyone not being happy with that pedal. I like it. Now, I own a bunch of looper pedals. I have the RC, no, sorry, not the RC. I have the TC uh, Ditto, and I have, uh, you know, a more looper. I have a bunch of them, and I just, I use that RC1 all the time. So, I really li like that pedal. And if you're new to loopers, I would definitely recommend that pedal. That's the easiest one to figure out. So... And uh, next question is, what do you think of the Jet City Amp 20 watt amp? I think they are some of the best. Jet City stuff is some of the best priced, best quality product out there when it comes to tube amps for the dollar value. Their cabinets are really cheap and really good. You're right, cheap price but good quality. Their amps are really good. It's just, it's just good stuff. So uh, no reservations when um, when you talk about that. And I don't know if they still do it, but there for for a time you could go to Saldano's website and send them a Jet City amp that you already have, or buy one from them, and they'll mod it up to be more like a Saldano. So um, you know what? Would that be a cool video? That'd be a cool video. Maybe I'd do that. Right? A B a Jet City versus a modded Jet City they did. I would be I would be up for that because I'm curious and you know and I'm pretty sure I'd I'd like it because I really like the Jet City stuff. So. So I can't imagine getting it fixed up by Saldano wouldn't be better. So the um, Mr. Venroom13 says, what's the difference between cheap and expensive pickups and guitars? Very little, <laughs> right? Um, there is some differences, right? Pickups are an interesting thing because um, they're one of the things that I can tell when I don't like a certain style pickup with my ear when I play a guitar. And I can tell when I like a pickup. But never have I ever found that the cost of that pickup has been the determining factor. It's always been the style of magnet or the, uh, you know, how much, how much signal, how much strength it has. So what I've found is, and for me, my ear tends to gravitate towards lower output pickups, pickups that don't push very hard, right? Um, I, I don't like to, to, to have all the sound coming from the pickup. I like to be a little smoother and let the amp work a little harder or the pedal work a little harder. Now, what's interesting about that is some cheap pickups are underwound and they just have a sound that I like. So I've had very good luck with pickups, whether they're cheap or expensive. So, um, and, but I will tell you this, I, I do know that when you make a pickup out of nice materials, it does tend to sound better. That's why a lot of small builders of pickups, when people say they're really good, I go, well, yeah, my experience is if somebody makes it by hand and does quality work, it will be good. Um, but I think pickups are one of the few things out there that I, I find it's interesting as guitar players, we don't really take advantage of the mass produced more, right? Um, if there's one thing I'd like to see um, come down in price, it's pickups. I think they're really, you know, when I see pickups for $150 for a pickup, it is kind of silly to me. Um, and I and I say that because I I bought them. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a hypocrite, and I'm not disparaging anyone who's done it because I've done it too. And I like the pickups, but I can't say I like them because they were so much better quality than a sixty dollar or fifty dollar pickup. I just like them. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Christian said, "Hey, I'm kind of leaning towards that five ninety four, but so pricey though. Yeah, that's like said. That's." And you know, and used, I was looking on used single cuts too, and they're up there as well. They're crazy. So, um, they're, uh, let's see. Uh, 
Okay, Mark wants to know, hey, do you do live gigs? And if yes, what is your go-to live rig and why? I don't. I jam with friends and people sometimes, but I don't do live gigs. Um, mostly because I didn't have time. You know, I was doing so much stuff before. Now I'm working, I think, a moderate amount of hours a week. I feel like I work about 40 hours a week. That's the least amount of hours I've worked in over a decade. I've been working at least 10 hour days for six days a week for so long that, you know, besides, you know, and then family time, I never had time for gigs. So I've been thinking about gigs more and more. Um, the next question is, what do you think of, it's from JM Wibby 36, 97. You guys always have a lot of numbers. It says, uh, what do you think of the Boss RC3 Looper versus the RC1? The RC3 Looper is cool because it's got the drum tracks and it's got bankable features, but um, I don't, I don't need it. I don't need to. I don't need it to remember any uh, any loops for me, and I don't need the drum tracks. So uh, to me, the RC3, if you like, it's the RC1, but with more features. So of course, it's a good product. I like the RC1. More features are nice. Me personally, I don't need the other features, so I'm not spending the hundred dollars to get them because I, I don't use them. So there you go. Um, Nathan Sanjay sent me five bucks. Nathan. Nathan works at Paul Reed Smith Guitars. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Says, I uh, forgot to put a message with my tip. Here's my message. Buy an espresso frat with light ice double blended on me. <laughs> it's funny. Now, here's something, Nathan. I have switched from those. I don't drink those anymore. And that, I know it's going to shock you. I drink now. My drink of choice at Starbucks is uh, coffee with two creams, two sugars. So uh, vintage coffee, two creams, two sugars. That's that's how I get it now. Um yeah, I, uh, uh, but yes, forever it was the, but they got, you know what it is? Not that I want to get on a Starbucks trend, uh, 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 you know, thing. Their prices have just got so obnoxious, I got irritated. I feel like every couple months I was going in there and jacking up the price. And, you know, you know, it just got silly. So I switched to coffees because they're cheaper and I like them fine. Uh, uh, Paul wants to know, what kind of music would I play if I was in a live gig? Oh, you know, if I was in a live gig, I would probably do one of two things. My dream gig would be to do like a Bowling for Soup tribute type band. No one would go see it, but I would have fun doing it uh, just because it's, it's fun. You know, like a little punk, happy punk rock band. That's my, my ideal thing. If I wasn't going to do that, I would probably like to do some kind of singer-songwriter gig where, you know, two acoustics and, and, and have somebody sing and I'll play acoustic. Uh, um, that's ideally. Um because what's interesting is, is my music tastes um, are not reflective of my gear choices. My gear choices are because I'm a collector of gear. I like stuff. I like learning about stuff. But pragmatically, if I was in a band, I would want to keep it as simple. I like things to keep it simple, right? An amp, one pedal, you know what I mean? That, you know, uh, like I said, I wouldn't have a giant pedal board. I would just have a pedal. So uh, there you go. So there you go. Uh, Yes, Phil says. Phil Smith says, "Stop Starbucks, save money, and you can buy more guitars." Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, the Starbucks thing. Uh, not, I don't know why we're talking about this, but I'm just going to tell you anyways. I, I, uh, Nathan you, used to, like I said, used to work with me, and he's a good friend, and now he works at Pollard Smith in Maryland. Um, and he knows I was addicted to Starbucks every day. But to be honest with you, it was really just because it was in the shopping center where I was working, and it was just something to do to break up the day. So now that I'm not next to one, I have no no desire to go there. Um, in fact, my main reason for going to Starbucks now is just if I'm traveling, it's somewhere to stop. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, next question. Um, okay, so here's a good question. Uh, his, uh, it's it's Bolio, Bolia, I'm sorry, Skander, says, what do you think about PRS SE Custom 24, the 2017s? You know, I, I haven't tried them. Isn't that funny? I saw them at the NAMM show. I thought I'd have my hands on them by now. Um, and um, uh, that's one. So interesting enough, that's why I'm answering the question, is I plan to have my hands on a custom 24 SE soon. Um, I uh, We talked about maybe doing a custom run of those. We're not going to do that. There wasn't enough interest. That's fine. Um, so now I would like to do a video where I review it and and, and detailed review of it and go into it. I really think it's one of the best guitars out there, uh, the SE Custom 24, for price, for money, for, you know, right? It's a good, it's a good, good, good guitar good for good gigging. It's, it's a great thing. So, um, I, I plan to do that. So, and I'm trying to see if I can maybe get PRS to give me one to do a giveaway with. So they would send it to me, I'd review it and then we'd give away. Um, I've never really done a lot of that. And I, I, I think if I do that, I want to do something really cool. And I think that's a cool guitar, man. If I could give that to you guys, that'd be awesome. Um, 
Okay, here's a good big idea. 100 said, what are the name of those wooden pickups you have? I have a Wiggins pickups. It's W-I-G-G-I-N-S. Wiggins is William Wiggins. You can check him out on Facebook. That's how you find him. And he sells them direct to people. He is just crazy underpriced for what those are. Uh, fantastic. He makes them down in Tucson. They'll even do custom images on them and stuff. Uh, great stuff. I, I love him. He's got a new humbucker, and I've been really interested in it. Um, and uh, I don't know why I haven't called him yet. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, let's see. Uh, Incafish, Incafish23 said, gave me five bucks and said, best type of pickups for surf. I have a Jagmaster uh, Squire with stock Duncan Design humbuckers. You know, I, I like those Duncan Design humbuckers. So the question I ha would have for you is, do you not like them? I, I found they were they were fine. Um, if it was me and I was going to do the Jagmaster and put different pickups in there, um, I don't know. I think, like I said, I think the uh, the Duncans are are really good. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would suggest other than that to get a better sound. Because for surf rock, I don't think pickups are that big of a deal, right? If you're doing surf rock, man, surf rock because it's clean through reverb. It's all about having a great sounding clean amp with a great reverb sound. Um, that's the magic of it, right? And the right strings. So, so if that helps. There is. Uh, Jim Chase uh, is asking me, said, hey, from Canada. Hey, Jim. And he says, are acoustic simulator pedals worth it? Uh, preferred brand? Question mark. So there's two questions. I love acoustic sound, but prefer the feel of electric guitar. Thanks. Uh, I've asked, I've been answered this question before, and I definitely think that the preferred, me, I, I've tried a bunch. I really like the, the Boss acoustic simulator pedal. Uh, there's two versions. I like the one with the reverb, but the other one's fine too. And... I find that once you put it in there, you have to run it through some kind of preamp, right? So that's the trick. There's a bunch of acoustic simulators, but like I said, any of them are going to sound okay. You have to run it through uh, a preamp. If you really want a good acoustic simulator sound for electric guitar, another great idea is to run an electric guitar into acoustic simulator pedal into an acoustic amplifier even an inexpensive one it will really improve the sound of acoustic and get you closer to the real thing so that's definitely what i would look at and like i said the boss one is a great way to go mostly because um because it's affordable and it sounds good and it's built like a tank anthony cook said don't eat yellow snow i i will not especially when it's 118 anthony <laughs> The uh, um, your 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 uh, your tip is in euros, so I assume you're you're over 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 the, the the pond, man. It's 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 insanely hot here, is to say to say the least. So, um, okay. So next question. Let's go back and oh, it just jumped again, guys. I'm sorry. There's 581 of us hanging out, so it's so it's a really cool Friday. Um, Let's see. Um, you know what? Because I like this question because, uh, you know, it's something I'd like to talk. Paul says, what do you think of the Spider 4? You know, I, I'm one of the YouTubers that I'll get bashed every time. And I know you guys all hate the Spiders. I see it. I've never seen, so, like I said, uh, Line 6 is like the winger of, of of amp modeling amps. There's Those Line 6 amps are fine. They are. I, I, I don't know what everybody's talking about. I play them and they're fine. Do I love them? Absolutely not. Are they amazing? By no means. Are they horrendous? Absolutely not. And I know that because I've used Line 6 and so has many other people and recorded with it and no one can really tell what's going on. So, um, you know, do I recommend you go buy one? Only because they're like a dollar now. I mean, you can't even sell, like think of this, you can find right now a Spider 75, uh, a Spider 4 75 amp. 400 bucks or less, right? And I know that because I have one <laughs> and I think I put it on Craigslist for 100 bucks and uh, no one even called me, <laughs> right? And um, that is funny. And I was just like, and I was just one of the, because I had, I've had, like I said, I have a lot of Line 6 products over the years. I've I kind of accumulated one or two here. I have a couple of their pedals, a couple of their amps. Like I said, it's all fine stuff. Um, I think it just became the butt of a joke and everybody started pounding on them. But the truth is, you know, the only thing, my, my only personal opinion about this is it's fine if you don't like them, but I, I've AB them so many times against other amps that are apparently so much better and they're, they're marginally better, they're, right? PV is marginally better than the Line 6. Fender is marginally better than Line 6. They're better, but it's not one is horrible and one is great. It's one is good and one slightly better. So, so yeah, Line 6 is fine. And you know what? Thank goodness they're all doing that. If you're into Line 6 out there, buy it. 
On my local Craigslist right now, there is a spider valve 112 combo. That's a 40 watt tube amp, okay? In perfect condition, the guy wants 250 bucks. He's relisted it two or three times. $250 for a 40 watt tube amp. And that amp sounds fine. It was co-designed with Bog by Bogner. It is fine. <laughs> in fact, I've been thinking about buying it. Um, so if you guys live in the area, in Phoenix, look it up. Offer the guy 200 bucks. If he takes it, you just scored huge. You could, you're a good deal at 250. If you get it for $200, that's a pedal. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so I'm gonna butcher this name when I'm trying it. And and you and you gra, rock ya, man. Uh, hard name, but uh, just gave me five bucks. You guys are great. This this uh, that's a super chat thing is is cool. It's like I said, it's like a tip jar. Um, it's kind of fun. It's like it's like uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like getting tipped. Like I'm on the side of the street playing guitar, and you guys are throwing dollars and stuff and fives and stuff in the guitar case. It's kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that live. Maybe I'll just go down to to Mill Avenue and just play acoustic with the case. Yeah, see, MB215, the spider valve amps are amazing. I, I, I agree. The only issue I've ever had with spider valve amps is I had one that broke, right? But so you know, I sold it to Tony Crank of Crank Amps, and he fixed it dirt cheap, and then he played it gigging. He gigged with it because he says it was fine, right? Um, so, you know, yeah, but to be honest with you, it wasn't super expensive, so they happen. Um, Humbucker Hum says, hey, Phil, is that a PAL 800 on your right-hand side? It sure is. I got it today. If you guys go on the Facebook, the New York Facebook, look at the picture of the box. <laughs> it got destroyed. The, the pedal is fantastic. It is, hands down, the best JCM 800 simulator pedal I have ever heard. Um, there's pedals like a oh, good example is like the Lawrence 68 pedal, right? That's a fantastic pedal. And that's kind of like a boutique pedal in the way that it sounds amazing. It's this, it's, it's this huge sound and it's got this kind of Marshall vibe, but it's like, it's the perfect sounding Marshall, right? This uh, PAL 800, what this sounds like is every JCM 800 I've ever plugged into, right? A friend's at a guitar center in the shop, just plugged in and play it. And I go, that's the JCM 800. That pedal gave me the same feeling. So it's 150 bucks. Here's what I will tell you. I'm not going to tell you it's the best pedal ever. I'm not going to tell you it's the best JCM 800 pedal ever. I'm going to tell you that if you've ever been curious about what a JCM 800 sounds like and you don't have access to it and you don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a used one, I'd buy that pedal for 150 bucks. Um, and if you hate that pedal, you hate Marshalls. <laughs> so, um, and the reason that's important is I find a lot of people try Marshalls, like JCM 800s and 900s, think because they're like the these holy grails of tone for guitar, you know, history, right? And they plug them in and they just hate them. And they always say the same thing: "There's some good ones and some bad ones." And uh, that's kind of true, but mostly. They don't sound the way you think they sound, right? Because they've been recorded. When you hear them on albums, it's not the same sound. A Marshall has a very unique sound in real life compared to how it sounds produced. So, um, okay, next. Hold on, I want to go back. It just jumped again. And here's one. It says, Hero, Heroes... Heroes in Heaven says, Philip, what are your thoughts on the Vintage Icon Series V6 Strat? I don't know what that is. Is Vintage the brand? Vintage brand? No. I don't know what it is. Sorry about that. Um, Donald wants to know, uh, hey, Phil, have you ever played a low-priced Washburn N1? Yes, I've had a couple of them. I've had the N1s, N2s, obviously N4s. I went through a, a phase where I just bought tons and tons of Nuno guitars. Uh, I had nine N4s at one time. Uh, and uh, same thing, I think if you go on the Know Your Gear, maybe I posted pictures of that. It was pretty obnoxious. I had like every color and some N2s. Uh, the N1s are great. Um, I like the small bodies. I, I think they were fantastic guitars. They're a lower price guitars. They suffer from the fit and finish of lower price guitars and the idea that they don't have the best, you know, high detail fret work and stuff. But um, all that stuff can be fixed for $50 if you take it down to a quality technician or a luthier and have them do it. So other than that, the guitar construction concept is, is great. Um, so uh, La Petra says, Hey, Phil, HRD3 Deluxe Reverb or Supersonic? I don't know which, which one I pick. Um, I would probably pick in or I'll, I'll do this for you. I'll just, because I like all three and I've owned all three. Um, and I, I In order for me, it's Supersonic 22, then the Deluxe Reverb, then the HR uh, DR3. Um, and... Um, and funny enough, I usually recommend everybody to the the, the HRD, 
I'm just the Hot Rod Deluxe. The Hot Rod Deluxe. The reason I recommend it is it's seven hundred dollars, where the Deluxe Reverb is a thousand and fifty or a thousand, and the Supersonic's eleven hundred. So for price to dollar, the Hot Rod Deluxe can't be beat because it's as good as those two other amps in clean quality. Just you need to add pe uh, pedal. The Deluxe Reverb has a very old sound to it. It's brighter. It's it's just a classic sound. The Supersonic Twenty Two is an all around kind of good amp. Um, but I own a, a Deluxe Reverb and a Supersonic 22. I like them both. I've had many uh, Hot Rod Deluxes. I like them. Ultimately, like I said, if I was gigging, I would probably go back to a Hot Rod Deluxe just because it's loud enough and it's I, and it's uh, not so crazy expensive. I have to worry about it, right? Um, I'm a uh, if I when I'm gigging, I'm the guy who's like worrying about the guy spilling beer on my stuff. <laughs> so some guys don't care about that. Some do. I'm unfortunately. Um, Kenny Dave St uh, Stowe says, your pedal shelf rules. Thanks. I'm going to add another one, <laughs> another row uh, is the plan and move stuff around. So, uh, um, okay. So let's see. Here's another one. Uh, Matt wants to know, hey, Phil, favorite ba bass compressor pedal? Um, I'm in love with the Boss BC-1X. I haven't tried the BC-1X. I've heard very good things. Me, I've tried a ton of bass compressors. Uh, one of my favorite bass compressors is EBS. EBS makes a really good bass compressor. Um, but for me personally, what I started doing many years ago was just not worrying about it. Uh, I, I didn't care anymore. So I use almost all guitar pedals for my bass stuff. So I use a, a bass or a guitar compressor for my bass and I've, ha I've had no real issues with it. Um, but the Boss BC-1, I've heard really good things. I, I would really, like I said, I like the EBS stuff. It was really good for bass. Um, let's see. Drawing with Mika. Hey, Drawing with Mika, how's it going? I got your email and I started checking out your channel. It's a really cool channel. I, I was really impressed. Um, uh, let's see. So it says, here's the question. It says, are you going to be hosting an upcoming Talking Guitars YouTuber Summit? Um, not that I know of. I did the one, did anyone, if you saw it, I did the one where we all talked. It was like the Tone King, uh, Shane from In the Blues, Pixie Licks, um, uh, Nate in the state, Nick in the states, and and me, and uh, I think they want to do that again. I'm always up for that. I'm pretty easy going when it comes to that stuff. I like doing those. Uh, you know, um, I talk a lot, <laughs> so if you ask me to go talk, I'll go talk. That it's just how it goes. I'll talk until I can't, until my voice goes out, and my voice goes out actually quite often. I'm not kidding. I lose my voice more than probably people should because uh, I talk too much. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Dustin Barr says, make sure you go live when you do the street peddler thing. You know what? You don't be shocked if I, if I don't do that, I'll, I'll probably go live like on Facebook, but I'll, uh, you know what? I dig it, man. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely a tipper. If, if I walk by and you're giving any kind of, any shot out there, you know, playing on the corner, I tip. I love it. I love it. I love people just trying, right? I don't care what you're doing. If you if you're out there just trying a little bit, man, you know, because I think all of us can relate. Everybody relates to, you know, do trying to do something. Let's see. Um, next question. Um, oh, here's a good question. Matthew goes, "What happens to your shirt designs if Gene Simmons gets his trademark?" Um, so if you guys aren't sure what's going on, check out Pixie Licks's channel. Pixie Licks is definitely authority when it comes to trademarks and stuff. Um, and um, and he did a video uh, just today, I think I watched already about Gene Simmons is trying to trademark the 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 this, which is I love you in sign language, but saying it's the rock. And of course, the issue with trademarks is this is so close to this. Um, I don't know because I actually own a trademark on that logo, so I don't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah, um, the question would be for me would be. Uh, the, the, the dude plus the guitar equals the dude thing plus know your gear is, is trademarked. And if you know how trademarks work, it, you understand that it's a trademarks have to have what's called a secondary meaning. Uh, right. So, um, so, so and a good example with trademarks is this, you can't trademark the word American and you can't trade work mark the word airlines, but you can trademark American airlines because it's a secondary meaning. It means in that in that that sense, it means something else. So, um, so I did trademark my know your gear stuff. Um, however, I don't know because his trademark would be within my trademark, right? Because that's the dude fist hand thing. I I, I don't know. Um, so, I don't know. And then also, I can tell you this: even if he was to get if he was to get it, 
because it can always go happen. Um, if he got the trademark, then he'd ha- fighting it would be a nightmare, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, he's asking for trouble. I mean, the only thing he's really going to be able to do is send a lot of cease and desist letters. Good for him. Because, you know, he can't really sue people like me. We don't make enough money. There's not enough There's not enough to go after. He, his damages are just not strong enough. And, like I said, once he cease and desist... It, so the answer to your question is, I, I don't know what happened. I really don't care. <laughs> So, um, because more of, because to be honest with you, if he does it, I'm be more shocked that he got it done, and maybe impressed. I'm not sure. Um, um, and I'm and I'm sure what the the play for him is probably is he's probably trying to get a licensing deal. So uh, in my case, maybe I'd have to pay a royalty of every shirt. But again, I don't know because, like I said, I got trademark, so I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know how you, I don't know how a trademark can infringe another trademark. Interesting. Um, uh, let's see. Um, this question, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to read it anyways. It's D Mike 03 says, why does Gibson make su- uh, such a small amount of signature guitars? I don't know the answer. Sorry, Mike, uh, D Mike, but I can tell you that there is a smaller amount of signature guitars because the fact that in my personal opinion, signature guitars have gotten out of hand. And I think we all kind of agree. Like, right, it was Van Halen guitars, and that was kind of cool, and Steve Vai guitars, and that was kind of cool, and you got a Clapton model, and that's kind of cool. And these kind of rock gods and blues gods were getting guitars, and it made sense. And then, you know, it dipped down to the B teams and the C teams, and and then, you know, some of the players that you didn't know, but maybe you kind of dug it that, you know, right, that they got these cool guitars, right? Um, there's a lot of players that are just not as well known, right? Um, and but they get you know like Greg Howe's got a guitar, but Greg Howe's a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah, he's not as famous as Steve Vai and 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 Eddie Van Halen, but he's a fantastic guitar player. And and if you know who he is, then you understand. Um, but then it got to the point. I don't know about you guys. Guitars, artist guitars, got to the point where they would announce them, and then I go, I don't know who the guy is. And then they go, they're in this band, and I'm like, I don't know who that band is. <laughs> <laughs> right and it did get silly and so because it got so silly uh now it's had a huge drop off in sales so a lot of manufacturers have gotten away from them so you're gonna see a lot like look at seriously look at paul reed smith and see how many artist guitars they have now it's it's very few and look at fender it's not it's less than half and it was uh if you were to pull the fender catalog from let's say 2007 10 years ago um no it's half and it's probably less than half so um there you go um Okay, so H462 says, how how does cap thickness differ between the American PRS lines, S2, S, uh, CE, and core? Um, well, main main difference is in the S2 and the CEs are, are like in the idea that they're using um, uh, half inch, no, quarter inch, quarter inch tops, which is pretty typical. The core line uses a half inch that's actually been uh, and I explain that in my video. If you look at the core versus uh, S- SE, I explain the differences in how they did the caps. Um, the caps are uh, an inch thick to start with, but they but they cut them and then they flip them over. Uh, it's hard to explain with my hands, but um, so the main difference is th- the core has a slightly thicker cap, and the CEs and S2s have thinner caps. Um, does that matter? I don't think so. <laughs> not that I can hear. Um, you know, that's not even a tone wood debate. That's a tone wood thickness debate so um so it's too it's too it's too finite at that point to even to to be able to to hear it um okay let's see next question uh metal maniac said hey any experience with hurricane guitars from the 80s nope never heard of them but i'm gonna mention that so i can look later when i do the index um the magnus says had any experience with the way huge green rhino yep uh, he says, how does it compare to the good old TS9? It's different. Uh, if you look at my um, overrated special video uh, uh, review, I, I talk about the Green Rhino and AB it, and you can totally hear what that does. Um, so it's uh, different. I, I like the Green Rhino a lot. It's one of those underdog pedals for sure. Uh MB215 says, Bogner's not going to put his name on something that sucks. Yeah, not that I know of, right? I mean, um, you, you know, so you know, 
I actually can tell you guys if you want to know. It's kind of kind of cool story. You know how Bogner got involved with uh, Line Six is an interesting story, and uh, I'll just get to the heart of it. That's important. So if you guys remember the Bogner Alchemist line, what that was was you had Line Six, and they had the ability to manufacture product overseas. So they 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 did this deal with Bogner, right? So they made the Alchemist. So the Bogner Alchemist is a Bogner designed amp. So Reinhold Bogner designed the amp. Line Six built it and supplied it to the dealers. So the dealer network was not Bogner dealers, it was Line 6 dealers, right? So a pretty easy thing to do. So if you're a Line 6 dealer, now you had access to the Bogner Alchemist, but none of the other Bogner series. And if you're a Bogner dealer, you had to become a Line 6 dealer to get just the, if you, even if you just wanted the Bogner Alchemist. So what's interesting is the deal was, he designs an amp and they're gonna build and sell it for him. Now, in that deal, they came up with the idea of doing spider valve as well. That idea is, um, well, then he designed a power amp section for them for their amp. That's the difference. So a spider valve is a line six amp that Bogner helped develop some of the tube stuff for it. And, and the Bogner Alchemist series is a Bogner amp that was built by Line 6. So if that helps, that's the differentiation of the two. But that's where that marriage came from, right? And I think they they really should have exploited that way better than they did. They really should have said, hey, look, this is a great idea, which is to take a high-end amp builder and a high-end tech company that makes us effects and put these guys together. I think it was ingenious. But, um, you know, they uh, it, it fiddled out. <laughs> So Warren said he wasted two dollars and he didn't even ask my question. I didn't see your question, Warren. Did it come up on the the super chats? I'll make sure I find it. So, because I'm not sure really how. Let me go to the top. Hold on, sorry guys. I just don't want to forget anybody because they highlight them in colors. I'm very new to super chats. So, um, okay, here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Yeah, nope. I don't see you, Warren. Uh, but uh, ask the question again. I'll make sure I answer it. Even if I have to email you later, I'll, I'll make sure it answers it. But uh, yeah, so so repost. I'll, I'll be looking for it. Okay. Uh, Sean Blue says, want a replacement for my Black Star One Watt? You okay? <laughs> That's tough, man. They got that's like a that's a very niched out amplifier. The only other one watt amplifiers that are out there that are decent are the Marshall ones at three times the price. So, stuff. That's a tough one. Yes, MB215. Bogner also helped with the DT series of Line Six amps. Absolutely. That's where they took it to the next level, right? I, I those were great amps too. Um, and same thing. Those Line Six DT amps, you guys super cheap compared for what they are right you can get the dt25 head which is an all tube uh tube head right with uh four modeling uh it's a relay modeling right and i've seen them for like four or five hundred bucks right so there you go um okay so here's a question from raymond he says hey i have a question he wants to know uh would you plug an electric acoustic into a clean tube amp? I personally wouldn't because you know you're gonna get feedback and it's not gonna sound very good. Um, you can in the bedroom, you know, right? It's just like a bass guitar. Anything in the bedroom at low volumes, you know, right? The bass guitar won't damage a guitar amp, but it could damage the speaker. You have to be careful. An acoustic electric amp, the, pro the acoustic electric guitar could cause feedback, and that feedback can be so bad. Again, you could blow a speaker or damage something. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. Can you at low volumes? Yes, live. I, I, and I've and so you know, this is where I'm always apprehensive when I say stuff. I've seen guys do it, right? I've been at gigs and I've seen people do exactly what I say not to do. So, so it's so when I say not to do it, it's more of a recommendation. I recommend you don't. However, can you? It physically can be done. It's just not a good idea. Um, let's see. Next question is. Um, Mike says, Hey, any thoughts on the Chase Bliss audio pe uh, pedals? I haven't tried them at all. Um, and Mario Kane says, Hey, I want to start buying pedals. And so what's the pedal should I get first? Um, well, that's a trick question because it really depends on your amp. You know, if you have a modeling amp, do you have a tube amp? You know, what do you have? So, so that's, that's a trick. Um, generically, you know, you can always start where we all started, uh, which is the, the Tube Screamer or the SD-1 by Boss. But the pedal I recommend a lot 
is the Line 6 uh, M5. It has 100 different effects in it. It's all true bypass. Um, it's $99 brand new or $129. You can do them cheap. They're like $60 bucks used. Anyways, uh, it's a great pedal. It has 100 different effects in it, and it's a great way to go and try a bunch of effects. And uh, I don't care what anybody says. They're all decent enough to to gig with if you had to. No one would notice anything's wrong. Um, are they the best stuff out there? No, but are they uh, are they definitely good enough to give you an idea of what's going on and to educate you in, in a real, you know, like turning knobs format? Absolutely. Uh, I have a video review of that. It's the M5, uh, Line 6 M5 uh, video review. Um, I have one on the floor. I was using it earlier today. It's fantastic. So there you go. Um, Let's see. Uh, Helmet uh, Helmut P says, "Hey Phil, any thoughts why the Mesa Transatlantic amp never took off?" Yeah, there's a ton of reasons why, right? Um, it, you know, it, it there was, it was good, but I, I didn't buy one. You know, and I buy a lot of amps like that. You know, right? And I've almost bought the Transatlantic 15, and I almost bought the Transatlantic 30, and um, and so I always look at it like the fact that I didn't do it means that. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't do it, and that's. But it was a good amp. Just, it looked cool, and then some people thought it looked horrible. My friend thinks it looks horrible. I think it looks fantastic. That happens a lot. Um, we be, we backtracks. We backtracks says know your gear. QA marathon for hundred thousand stuff. Yeah, woo. My voice would definitely go out then. Um. Okay, here's a good question. Sean wants to know, hey, Phil, uh, how does the Super Champ do with pedals? It does great with pedals. It takes pedals well. It's a very clean format. It'll take the pedals fine on the clean channel. Um, and, uh, and you know, it's, uh, like I said, the Super Champ, definitely one of the best $300 tube amps out there by far uh, in that price range. It's good quality. It's built well. It's got a good sound. It takes pedals well. Very cool. Um so Guitar Hack says, hey, Phil, what do you think about Fender doubling their prices with the Pro Series? I haven't seen that. I don't know where you're at. Are you in the U.S.? All I've seen on the Pro Series, as far as I know, we're at $13.99 and then now $14.49 for a Rosewood one. Um, and that's in line with what they were before. Um, so, uh, so there you go. Um, but I don't know. Is anyone chiming on that? Does anyone notice anything? Has any, is there a price increase? I haven't looked lately because, uh, there you go. Uh, we buy track says Ikea pedal shelf question mark. Yes. I got these uh, shelves. My shelves come from Ikea. <laughs> they're $6 a piece and they're, they're, they're like black. Uh, yes. And that's exactly where I got them. So, um, so if that's the question, if, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Okay, um, so Russell Smith says, Phil, why do you think the 59 Les Paul is worth the money? You know, I, I love this question because I did the, um, I did that, you know, video about the, the Max Les Paul, if you guys haven't seen that. And th that was an interesting thing because I had two of them from a friend and they are worth 25 grand a piece. I mean, that's, you know, right. He's, he sold one. I think he got 15 to 20 grand for it. So, um, I have no idea. It's one of those things. That's why I want to do the video about it. It's one of those things I'm as curious as you guys are. What is that? Is it real? Is it just something that, you know, rich people collect? Is it really this infamous sound? You know, right? You know, um, I've picked up a real 59 Les Paul before. I played it, but I was sitting on a couch. I didn't plug it in. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to think. Um, um, I, uh, I've played those Max Les Pauls. They're supposed to be as close to a 59 as, as you can get. They were great. I beat them against my Les Pauls. I thought they were the same. I liked the pickups in them, which weren't really, you know, those were those Lawlers or whatever. Um, so, you know, my, my, I don't have a great theory about why a 59 Les Paul is worth so much money other than the availability. You can't get one. So, um, but you know, it's, it's hard to argue with players like Joe Bonamassa and those guys that swear that it's this holy grail of sound. I don't know. I just don't know. Shaman Blues didn't even ask a question. Shaman, you sure? You just give me five bucks and no question, huh? They, uh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, the, let's, so let's find somebody's question. Whoops, go back. Sorry about that. When I jump around, it loses a little bit. Okay, so... Exo Darkness has got a question. It says, exotic EP booster for direct recording? Question mark. You mean, can you use it direct into recording? Mm, 
maybe? I don't know if it would sound very good, though. It's a good question. I've never tried the Exotic EP straight into like a recording interface. Um, it's uh, it's it's not an interesting. It's it, I don't know. I just don't. I don't. My prediction is it doesn't sound that great. But I haven't tried it, so I'm just predicting. Um, in <laughs> I'm pooping right now. Said, did you ever review a Chapman guitar? No, I didn't. You know, um, the Chapman guys has got their own thing going, and they're they're doing great. And um, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I've, tried, I've interacted with them a couple of times in trying to get involved with the brand at some point, you know, either through selling it a, a while back or now reviewing it. And, you know, I, I get it. They, they don't really need anybody. They, they have a great internet presence, right? They're not. And to be honest with you, I'll tell you how I feel now. I, I got no, I, I, I got nothing bad or good to say about it. The truth is, there are so many companies that I think are good that have no internet presence. I'd rather help those people out. I'd rather find out how I, how I can, you know, we can talk about them as gear guys. I don't think there's an absence of Chapman stuff, right? And, you know, to be honest with you, let me ask you a question. It's rhetorical. If you were a YouTube reviewer with a good amount of following and you were doing okay, would you review a guitar like Chapman? What if you don't like it? What could you say? Would you want to start a battle with a bigger entity on YouTube? I think that's why a lot of reviewers stay away from them. Uh, me, personally, I don't look at it that way, right? I would just point out what I like and don't like about it. Um, but, uh, but like I said, I think there's a great amount of products out there. I saw he's doing a new Indonesian line. It looks pretty cool. Um, and I really like what he's doing, uh, so you know. As a in, somebody in the industry who's looking at it, I think they're doing all the right stuff, and I think they're smart, and I think they're they're there's nothing really nothing really bad. I think they've they've made all the mistakes they've made. I think of the mistakes that any company makes when they're starting out. So, uh, Mika T says, does the pickup location affect the tone? Um, like if you put a neck pickup to bridge, or okay, so that's a different question. So let's answer both questions: the one you're not asking and the one you're asking. The first question is. Uh, you know, does the placement of a pickup affect the sound? Absolutely. It's probably the biggest sound thing, right? If I was going to say what's the bit most important thing on a guitar is where the pickup is, right? That's going to decide everything and how how beautiful the tone is going to be, how bassy, how trebly. So, yes, that's easy. The second question is, but does it affect tone like swapping, right? Like you put a neck pickup to the bridge and a bridge to the neck pickup, will they sound? Um, my experience has been uh, no. In fact, the reason I've come to that theory is because so many times have I've um, I've done repairs for customers who have put their own pickups in, and then when I was checking them, they put them in backwards, and they never noticed. <laughs> And uh, I don't know if I would have noticed until I looked. And uh, I am notorious. Uh, I do this thing where I put bridge pickups in both positions. I do that a lot. I have a bunch of guitars where I have a bridge in, in uh, like a JB in the bridge and a JB in the neck. So uh, I've done that. Uh, there are players like Eddie Van Heelan that put a higher output pickup in his neck sometimes, you know, right, than in his bridge. And so um, does it matter? Does it affect it? A little bit, not a lot, right? Um, it, it, there is subtlety, though, in the idea that um, and the reason, oh, let me give you a backup on that because this is important. The other reason that's important is because here's the trick. So if you were to argue, let's, and use, we're going to use a number that doesn't make sense uh, except for the analogy. Let's say the output is like a 12K, okay, and on a bridge pickup. And the neck pickup is 9. And you swap them. And you go, well, that will, that will have a negative effect on the, on, the, on the neck pickup by putting a higher output pickup on the neck except for there are pickups out there that are 14k and the neck is 12k so so that's my my thing right it, it, unless you unless, right every pickup has a different output so there are if you were to put a bridge pickup in a neck pickup position there are tons of neck pickups that are equal to that bridge pickups output does it make sense so it's more of a guideline. I think it's a smart idea to go with a lower output pickup in your neck than your bridge for all the reasons that you could probably Google in five seconds. Um, I've experienced the same thing, although I just don't think it's that so important that it, it has a negative effect. It just has a there's just some better uh, things you can do to the tone to put the lower output pickup in the neck. So um, Paul Smith says, do you collect anything else other than guitars? No, man, I'm very just one one thing. <laughs> guitars and pedals and amps and stuff. I'm just into this. I've been into this since I was 15 and I just have never broke um, uh, from from it. Um, so that's uh, uh, 
lip uh, liposuction for the soul says best chicken wings in phoenix area um i like the monk they have the best boneless wings there's a lot of great places uh but i like the it's the hungry monk hungry monk for boneless uh, wings are amazing um let's see okay next question John says, hey, on my iPhone, I don't see the dollar sign for the Super Chat. Yeah, it, it may not be available. I'm, I'm not even sure how Super Chat works. I'm not even sure how you guys are tipping me. It just pops up on my thing and I see it. I don't see it on any of my stuff where I can see. So there, so it's, it's kind of new and it's just, I don't know, it seems cool. I mean, right? <laughs> okay, next question. All right, let's, go, let's see what we got. We got... Um, All right, let's see. Okay, so here's one interesting one because I like the crazy questions. Okay, so here's a question with it's, I don't know how to say it. RLTA04 says, I like Phil's channel and Pixie Licks. Some of the others kind of seem like they are in it for the reasons of what I would call greed. Well, and the reason I like that question is because here's the interesting part. And, and, and I always think, you know, right, uh, using it. You, here's, the, here's what I'm going to say. If you had a channel, right, you, you know, all these channels basically got started the same way, like mine, right? We just started making videos and then people started watching them. And you're like, oh, I didn't know anybody would watch. And then I didn't know anybody would pay me. And I didn't know, you know, right? And you start figuring it out. And then companies start approaching you, Right. Um, and they, and, and that's shocking, right? Think of this. My first company that approached me to, to give me free product was within 1300 subscribers. So before I was basically at 1400 subscribers, I already had a con company reach out and go, yeah, we'll, can, we'll send you some free stuff. And you know, <laughs> right. You would be like the rest of us going, what? Why, why would you send me anything free? And of course, why would I want something for free? So ship it. But you start learning some horrible things. And this is where I think YouTubers sometimes go wrong. And this is why I have the policy that I have. And if anyone want to know what my official policy is, I'll tell you on this video uh, as well um, on, on how I do stuff. Um, the problem I think is, is that free stuff or when they pay you to review stuff or demo stuff or check stuff out. Um, you can't lie, right? And I don't mean you can't lie like, you, you know, you can't. You physically can. But, I mean, you, you, it's easy to tell when somebody doesn't like something, right? You know, I when I do videos, sometimes it's because I'm really excited about it. Sometimes because I know you guys are excited about it. And sometimes I'm really curious about it. But very rarely is it because, you know, I'm like, you know, some company reached out, you know, right? In fact, I like I said, I don't really deal in that kind of market of it. Um, so... It could be greed, but I think in most times, I think it's just they get caught up in it and they're, and then they get stuck. So I've seen it too many times now and it kind of burns me out. Mostly because I get sick of seeing the same products that I know are hyped. So I can tell you from my side, looking now on this side of the fence, I'll tell you what drives me crazy. I think it's funny that I'll look in my email and there'll be like a half a dozen companies that are just driving me crazy trying to send me product or pay me or do something and I'm not interested. And then the next 20 videos I see on YouTube are all those companies because the other YouTubers took the deal. And it's not that I'm upset that they took the deal and it's not upset that I, I think they got paid. I don't care. You, people should get paid when they work. That's just how life works. But... It just is boring because I don't think anybody cared about that stuff. And that's why those companies had to pay to get it out there. So there you go. Um, all right. Now we're on next tangent. Next question is... Uh, I'm not sure that I understand the question. It says, I think it's a fly solo attitude that's different from Philip's vibe, which is better. Music is when is is great but also keeps to himself yeah i like i, I don't understand what the question is but music is when is is a cool channel i check out his channel um he posts a lot of stuff that's actually he's one of the reasons i don't post so much stuff because um i have trouble keeping up with what he posts and then i get worried that if i put out too much stuff you guys can't keep up either um and um let's see um next question says but like i said love and I mostly see his stuff when it gets, you know, he's in my Facebook feed. Um, uh, 
Okay, it says... Sorry, guys. There's just... You guys have a lot of comments. and By the way, there's 619 of us hanging out. So we're going to call it in about five minutes. Um, MB215 said, Phil, did you demo the code? I did not. I tried the code 25 amp on Tuesday down in Tucson. I was down in Tucson for some work, uh, working with the new music store that's opening down there. And while I was there, I checked out some other music stores. I went to Rainbow and I went to the Guitar Center and I tried a code 25 and I liked it. It was, it was good. Um, I wasn't blown away. I thought maybe I was going to buy one, but I just didn't, I wasn't in love that much. I had to buy it right then. Um, and uh, so it's cool. So, because it's one of those amps I definitely want to get and maybe check out. Um, uh, Mario says YouTube values quantity over quality. Unfortunately, sometimes, right? It's tough. This is this is all new. Uh, you know what I mean? This is like I said. It's a new. It's a new. This is a new environment. New way of 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 doing stuff. So, um, let's see. Um, and then, uh, just because, let's see, hold on. Oh, Dan Trope's got a great question. Phil, ha- ever receive any local bands' uh, shirts? I have a few friends in a band and would love to send you a shirt. Yeah, Dan, I, I don't know if you ever saw, I, I-, I have to like uh, update this maybe on the Facebook. I have a policy and it's this. Uh, like I said, I have a bunch of policies. I'm going to start posting them. Uh, that's how I keep my sanity. I just have these rules I follow. If you are in a band or you have a music store or you're in the industry in some way and you have a shirt, if you send me the shirt, I will send you one of my shirts and then I will wear your shirt, right? It is that simple. I'm a 2X, right? Sometimes I can fit into an XL, but mostly I'm 2X just to keep it easy when I don't know what the shirt's, you know, when I can't touch the shirt, 2X is safer for me. Um, So that way when it washes, it shrinks, it's fine. 2X shirt, uh... You know, right? You you send me your band, send me whatever it is. I will send you one of mine in return. You just got to tell me what size shirt you are. It's shirt trading. I think is the coolest thing ever. I I think that's a thing that I think we should all start doing. I think everybody should do that. I think bands should trade with other bands. I think music stores should trade with other bands, right? Of course, right? So I will do that anytime. That's not not a big deal at all. I I would love to wear shirts that that are unique and interesting. So uh so absolutely, um um. Let's see. It says, uh, William says, William Gonzalez says, how did you start playing music? What inspired you? And what was your first guitar? Um, so I got into music um, because uh, I, I, I was uh, 14 and I was like, I got to get into something. I didn't know what to do. And so uh, I had a couple friends playing guitar and I heard Motley Crue and I thought that was cool. And I thought Nikki Six was a guitar player. I didn't know what a bass player was. So I was like, Nikki Six is cool. I think I'll just get a guitar. And so <laughs> I got a guitar. My first guitar was a JB Player Strat copy and a, a CMC amp, which is like a Gorilla copy amp, if there's even, that's how horrible, that's a copy of a Gorilla amp, and, um, but immediately after that, I went on to different, you know, different inspirations for guitar, but that's what got me on the guitar, was that, um, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even say I was a huge fan of Molly Crow at the time, I just, that's who I knew, <laughs> Right? I was like, oh, I, I know that they're a rock band and they have instruments. Um, but immediately became a huge Aerosmith fan. As soon as I got a guitar, that's where I went crazy was with Aerosmith. Um, so let's see. Uh, last three questions, then we'll call it. Ready? Here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, David Munoz says, how do we contact you if he wants you to work on one of our guitars? If you're local... Um, What's going on with that was we were going to open a new shop. I thought about that. What ended up happening was I've been contacted by two different, well, I'm just going to say two because it's, that's the two contenders now. There was like four, two contenders. I will make a decision. Um, I was going to do it today and something came up. So I'm planning on Monday and then I will probably hang my hat there to do repairs. And I'll make that announcement on the, uh, the Facebook for you local guys. I'm still doing guitar repairs, but it's just been, it's, it's just, it's going to be so much easier once I have this, uh, uh, set up through this shop. Uh, Warren, Michael. Uh, okay. So Warren, so here's your question. I'm hoping, right? It says strat tone knob gets in the way really annoying. Yeah. It, it, the tone knob does right. The, so not just the volume, but the strat knob, they, um, you know, you can just pop them out. 
<laughs> right? They, you can clip them off. They don't even have to. They, you, you can actually just take out a tone knob pretty easily on a Strat. It's really because it's connected to the switch, which isn't in series with anything. So it's in parallel. So because it's connected over, it's like jumpered onto. If you were to just snip them out with wire cutters, um, discount, cut it, pull the potentiometer out, and leave the hole, right? Plug something in there, put a cool sticker on it. You can do that, no problem. Order yourself a new pick guard without them. So yeah, I would. Um, so there you go. Uh, Matt says, do you still listen to records? I don't, Matt. Um, I don't think I ever listened to records. Um, I got into music when tapes were huge. So I got into tapes and then tapes to CDs. So records had been kind of phased out. And then now, be honest, by the time records came back, they were expensive. So, uh, oh, so, so Hero is in Heaven says, in the construction industry, we trade our company shirts. Yeah, see, I think it's cool, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, uh, I think that's the... The coolest thing out there is trading sh- shirts like that, especially if I can, you know, right? If I can help another person, they can help me. I think that's great. Um, okay, so last question. Let's see. It is. Um, oh, okay. It's a good question. Uh, I, 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 Koji, right? Koji Kabuto says, I love the reviews. What happened to the Highway 1? you trashed to make it look like a road worn um that's a good question ralph has that guitar or that bass it was a bass and he has it um and what i'll do is i'll get him to take a picture of it and post it on the know your gear facebook if you guys are curious so what what they're talking about is on the podcast the podcast we did the test podcast uh, about a week ago and put it out there see what you guys thought i put it on youtube you guys give me a lot of feedback we're working on we're gonna have four more so we'll have five podcasts total out and the four are gonna be we didn't want to keep making them until we got feedback we got the feedback we know exactly what you guys liked i had a blast doing it we're gonna do more of those in that podcast we talked about uh that right we talked about we trashed uh a highway one i think i talked about somewhere else that we did that uh, on the live show with uh, ralph um so he still has it, so you can see it. It's actually really cool. <laughs> um, um, he did a really good job, and you know, like I said, we 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 tortured it pretty pretty good. So we'll we'll do that. Well, guys, this kind of brings us to an end to another live uh, QA on Friday. We'll be back next Friday at three o'clock. It's already on the schedule. You guys can already see it. And then by this Wednesday, we'll have the next two scheduled out. It should be always on the Fridays. If it changes, I will change it. Um, we skipped last week. I, I decided I won't do any more skips. I will just adjust them to a different day. But I was out of town for four days, so it was pretty tough. Um, so uh, let's see. And if there's anything else... Okay, so, oh. yeah, Shaman Blue said, is podcast audio only? The first one was, and the feedback was, and you didn't, guys didn't like that. So we're going to do a video one. So the next ones will be video podcasts, right? So you can listen to them or you can watch them. I don't know what you're going to watch. It's going to be me and Ralph sitting talking and stuff, but um, but we're going to make it that way. Uh, cause, and thank you again for everybody who suggested that. That really, really helped out a lot. Um, um, Robert says, why Facebook? Well, because face, I do your own website. I have the websites. We just don't put them up. Facebook is just an easy way to get a hold of people or Instagram. Um, some people don't like it. I understand that. But to me, it's never about the source. It's about how easy it is to get information to the source. If it's not easy for me to get it out there, it takes up too much time. You know, right? So there you go. As always, guys, I just want to thank you all for hanging out with me today. And uh, thank you for the questions. Thank you guys for the tip jar. That was really cool too as well. And uh, tomorrow there'll be a new video. So we'll have some new videos. As we get closer to the 100 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, you'll see the video content will increase for a while. It's going to get a little obnoxious just because I want to kind of do this really cool kind of out there crazy thing. So there you go. And uh, as always, guys, thank you for your time and know your gear.